Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. Three, two, one, and we are back. And we have a fantastic podcast series. This is going to be probably a four to five day podcast series. And it's called Truth Revealed, the least to the most effective real estate lead generation ideas. And what we're going to be doing is going through, what was it, 30 different ideas, Julie? 30 or 32. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> and there's, there's always going to be more than that. But these are the top 32 ranked and rated from least effective to most effective. And by effective, we mean Will it actually turn into a transaction for you? That's right. So what we're going to be doing is going through every one of these, um, you know, most common lead generation topics that people like to discuss, agents like to discuss, and we're going to be expressing our opinions on it, obviously, but we're going to be sharing with you what it costs, how long it takes, what the results uh, should be, all the rest of it. So this is going to be a great source of information for you when you're building your own real estate lead generation wheel. And let me explain that. It's a very simple concept. Here's the lead generation wheel. You should start by, by the way, if you're taking notes, as many of you use this podcast for um, training your team or your brokerage, start out by drive, uh, drawing a circle. And assuming you're using an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper or an iPad or whatever, draw a relatively large circle. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be making something that looks like an old fashioned wagon wheel or like a bicycle wheel, something with a lot of spokes on it. So that is what really what we're going to be building uh, during this next five days worth of podcast is your lead generation wheel. So every spoke you put on the wheel, so you're going to draw a big circle, then a little circle in the middle, the little circle is the hub of the wheel. And then every spoke you put on the wheel represents a source of lead generation. And really the essence of the um, lead generation you know, spoke analogy really is that you want to build a wheel that's strong. Oh, you want to build a wheel where each spoke is independent of the other spoke, because here's the um, idea you're rolling down the wheel and you've uh, the road rather, and you've got this bicycle wheel on the front of your bike. And if the bike wheel only has one spoke and you hit a pebble on the road, obviously the wheel itself did not have enough structural integrity. So it's going to fail. Well, if you have two spokes, then it's stronger, three spokes, even better. You guys get the idea. But really the problem is, is that you don't know, for the most part, agents don't know which spokes are going to be the strongest spokes to put on their wheels. And even though we're giving you probably will be over 30 different lead generation ideas, you really effectively only need probably five to seven that you build over time, but you better sure as heck choose the right five to seven. That's right. And the second thing that we always see agents making a mistake on is believing that there is a one spoke that will solve all of your lead generation problems that you'll have an endless supply of proprietary leads just for you that will self-convert. And that as soon as you find that one thing, then all of your lead generation woes are over. Well, you have to accept the fact that there is no one magic bullet, easy button, you know, silver thing that's going to do that for you. In fact, you need the multitude of well-engineered spokes so that, you know, maybe for the next three weeks, you're not gonna have a past client that, that brings you a transaction. And if that's the only source that you've got, well, you're going to be broke next month. Instead, have multiple spokes to make a strong lead generation wheel. So when Julie and I were going through the 30 plus different ideas that we're going to share with you, we were, I think, qualifying and quantifying and really, mm -hmm. I think, judging each of these ideas by a few filters. And the first filter was quality. Julie, what did that mean? That's right. So here are our five filters. Number one, quality. What is the likelihood of the prospect buying or selling with you in the next 60 days or less? Are they a lead or are they just an impression or a contact? Do they themselves consider themselves to be a real estate prospect? Or are you the only one thinking, hoping, and praying that they might be a prospect? So the quality of the lead is our first filter. And just to give you a fair example, are you speaking directly with the seller who's already decided they need to sell the house in the next 120 days or less? Or are you just basically knocking on an apartment complex front door, hoping and praying you're going to stumble across a buyer that has to buy? Obviously, one is a heck of a lot more 
uh, quality, higher quality in terms of the likelihood of actually transacting than the other. But we're going to get into the weeds um, over the next few days explaining all of that in great detail. Really critical that you guys understand this. Otherwise, what you're going to do is you're going to spend your time trying to develop spokes for your wheel, which are effectively ineffective. And you're not going to have any uh, integrity in your lead generation system. Number two, Julie. A return on investment, ROI, the cost versus your results. Cost can be in terms of money and time or both. So what are you spending and what will you be getting? Again, to your previous point, not all spokes are created equally. So these are our filters that will help, you know, that we're sharing with you to help you understand why that is. Why are some of them rated higher than others? And number three, is the source of business or the spoke in your lead generation wheel duplicatable? Can you control the results or is it just completely random? Point number three or filter number three is t the time that it takes to see the results, the level of commitment and consistency required. There are certain things we'll talk about that takes more consistency and more commitment than you probably think. Filter four is really what are the skills necessary to make the spoke work? And that's something we're going to focus on a lot. By the way, I've got great news for you before Julie says filter number five. The things that work the best, and you're going to be learning about these on day number five, are the things that cost you the least in terms of actual money. I know that's kind it's of a, a cliffhanger, isn't spoiler it? Spoiler alert. Oh, what are they talking about? <laughs> mm. Well, that, that is the bottom line. And it's it is true. kind of funny. The things that cost the most have a tendency to be the least effective and least effective in terms of actually generating any closable transactions for you. So filter number five, Julie Harris. Filter number five, does the source give you buyer or seller leads? Seller leads are far more valuable than buyer leads. We have done many dedicated podcasts on the value of seller leads, of listings versus buyers. And I'm sure that's going to come up repetitively in our presentation here. Now, please forgive us as we're going through these points. We're only going to give you an overview of these points. And if you want a lot more drill down information, obviously your next move is going to be join Premier Coaching. There's a link in the show description where you can just click and join right now for free. Or you can just text the word Premier to 47372. And when you do, you're going to get instant access to the first level of Premier Coaching 100% for free. And yes, that does include a daily semi-private coaching call. So do the smart thing now and text the word Premier to 47372. Or you can, of course, just go to PremierCoaching.com. All right, here we go. Now we're going to go from the least effective... <laughs> to yeah. the most, and we are very tempted to do it the opposite I direction, know. but we're going to do it the because it was actually a hell of a lot harder to do it this it was. way, right? Because took Julie, us quite a bit of time. Well, it's because many of these <laughs> things we know are, you know, I mean, without you know, well, they're tempting, but they're not necessarily effective. Yeah, but this is some of these things we're going to be getting to, especially today and tomorrow, are the least effective things, but the things that unfortunately agents think are the most effective. And so as we go through some of these points, we're going to give you the real drill down, no bullshit reason why these are the least effective. It's going to be up to you to really use your own brain to think about why we're saying what we're saying. And I think it's going to become very self-evident that really at the end of the day, the, you know, the most distance between you and the decision making consumer uh, the, in terms of the most steps or time necessary or even skill necessary, oftentimes will result in you having essentially no results. So as we're going through these points, point. I want you to really think about what we're talking about and we'll backfill. But again, we've only got you guys for 20 or 30 minutes today. So we're going to go through these points as much as we can. If you want more drill down information, you want to create your own lead generation wheel with a coach, obviously just join Premier Coaching, text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to premiercoaching.com. All right, Julie, Point number 31, the least effective a source of lead generation in 2023 and probably forever going forward. Indeed. And this may surprise some of you. The least effective, number 31, the very bottom of the list. That's right. Distressed property. Otherwise known as three categories going to distressed, notice of default, short sales, and REOs. It is currently ineffective simply because there is very little of this opportunity. Coaches call this fishing in a lake with no fish. Currently, less than 1% of mortgages, and I re-researched that this morning just to make absolutely certain, less than fewer than 1% of mortgages are distressed, keeping in mind that only 50% of homeowners even have a mortgage. So if you don't have a mortgage, you can't be distressed, can well, you? We'll drill down on that. So of all the homes in the United States, 50% are owned with no mortgage. The other 50% that have a mortgage um, have on average 50% or something like that equity in their homes. So I want you, again, use your own brains. Uh, this is completely 
100% different than it was back during 2007, 2008, 2009. Julie and I were coaching then. We were training agents how to do distressed real estate then. So trust me when I tell you we have nothing against distressed property. We just want you to know not to waste your time in 99% of the markets around the country trying to pursue it. We've seen a lot of people bubble up and that, you know, mm -hmm. real estate people are trying to sell you guys the idea that there's going to be a big tsunami of distressed real estate. For someone to say that, they either have to be blissfully ignorant or just straight up lying to you about what's actually happening in the market. Now, you can do your own research. There are a few markets or segments of markets that do have a bit more distressed opportunity, but even then it's going to be a micro percentage. Now, I made a note here. Sometimes, and I see this from our coaches, I see this on what you guys uh, post for your coaching sessions. Sometimes you'll have a buyer prospect that will ask you to find them a foreclosure or to look for distressed property for them. You have to ask why. You've got to dig deeper. Are they just looking for a deal? Probably they are. The only percent of homeowners that have any likelihood of assuming they didn't do some sort of big refinance to pull their equity out are going to be people that bought in the first six months of 2022. Those are the people that are most likely going to be even with their mortgage. In other words, if they were to sell, they'd probably lose money. But I'll tell you what the cure for that is. They can hold the house for another year. They can rent the house. And because of the inflation rate right now, they're going to be essentially, you know, inflation is going to dig themselves. It's going to dig them out of the hole and they're going to have equity in the property. So the likelihood, and unless there's a enormous increase in unemployment, that would be the only thing that would make this wrong. But the likelihood that there's going to be any kind of, you know, radical increase in distressed real estate is as close to zero to, you know, enough that we are telling you guys now it's the least effective form of lead generation right. right now because the opportunity is it just simply isn't there. If that were to change, then obviously we're going to change our advice to you. Hopefully that's clear to everyone. Julie, number 30. Yes. Second to the bottom of the list, buying buyer leads in any way that is both expensive and ineffective. For example, Zillow leads. But remember, buyer leads are not hard to find. Why would you ever pay for them? So in, in your mind, think, are those leads qualified, motivated, and yours exclusively? No, you have no reason to believe any of that is true. And now, yet you're paying for it. Now, let me just give you guys some color on this. If you're a Zillow flex agent and they're pre-qualifying your leads, then the buyer leads themselves are going to be better quality. But remember the filters we gave you guys. Most effective, least effective, but it also we're figuring in the cost of the lead. So just to really drive this point home, a Zillow lead that if you guys are flex agents, you know that you're paying, what? 35, 40% referral fees on those buyer leads. And you know that those buyer leads are even at that are that not that consistent. We've got people uh, that we, you know, frankly, our coaching clients that were wanting to stop buying buyer leads from Zillow, had become dependent on buying bu mm -hmm. buyer leads at Zillow, wanted to break free of that dependence. And we had to help them understand the importance of doing it urgently be uh, by showing them what their average cost of buyer lead was. Now, I want you to understand something. I had a, well, I'll give you an example. I had a great conversation with somebody who is a huge producer, has a huge team, and their average cost of buyer lead from Zillow, and they did uh, cut the ties, was $600 per lead. Now that's cost per lead, that's not closed transaction. So they were paying $600 per lead, and then a certain percent of those, say 10%, would actually buy something. And then they were paying, on average, 35% referral fees. So, and I know the math is slightly different if you're a flex agent, but at the end of the day, we're factoring in least, uh, least effective to most effective, and we're obviously factoring the actual cost of the lead and also the probability of you closing a transaction. And Julie's point that I hope all of you became re or were really crystal clear about, buyer leads are plentiful no matter what direction the market is going, no matter what interest rates are. Those of you who have only been in the business for 15 years or less, you actually think buyer leads are hard to get because you have not had the opportunity to be listing agents because listings have sold so fast, especially in the last five or six years. So here's a little secret for you. The reason Zillow and all these other portals are able to essentially generate buyer leads and then sell those buyer leads back to you is because people go there looking for homes. If you have your own inventory of listings, which is, by the way, where we're going or this whole you know week's worth of uh, presentation, when you learn to be a powerful listing agent and you have your own listings and you then can essentially form your own you know mini Zillow and generate your own buyer leads, you are free. You've now built a real scalable business because you now are a listing agent. So I get it. Look, in the last 15 years, especially in the last five, it was hard to 
really generate very many leads off your listings because they sold so fast. Not true now. That's the blessing of a shifting market. Point number 29, Julie. Point number 29 is kind of uh, laughable and stand on its own, but number 29, billboards, bus benches, grocery cart advertisements, and you heard it, urinal cakes. You That's actually a thing. put urinal cakes in our, well, you're now going to have to explain what a urinal cake is. Yeah. Well, there are people who will try and sell you to put your <laughs> brand, your name, your phone number, maybe even, God forbid, a QR code. Can you imagine? On a urinal cake so that somebody goes to a restaurant bathroom and pees on your logo. How in the world is that possibly effective? I kind of put all this into the same category as a diapery baby butt in the grocery cart on your sign. So today's presentation has obviously taken a bit of a murky pivot, but the reality of it is, <laughs> sorry, the reality of it is, is these are the types of things that you guys are believing are going to generate leads for you. Urinal cakes being something that, yes, it's sold to agents, uh, but really at the end of the day is something that you should all be laughing at and maybe feeling sorry for if you're listening to us right now and you happen to be in a men's bathroom at the urinal and looking down and you know, you guys get the whole point here at uh, looking at the urinal cake. Bottom line, least effective. That was point number 29. Moving on to point number 28. Yes, point number 28, geographic farming, also known as geo farming. Now, this is very expensive, both in time and money, and it's also highly ineffective. This has been around long enough and tested by enough agents all up and down the experience scale that we know for sure it is highly ineffective and also very expensive. So uh, examples of this would be Every Door Direct, Smart Zip, anything that says that they are analytics-based mailing to theoretically motivated homeowners. Now, note to self, because this is their whole USP. Just because someone has lived there for 25 years in the house and it's paid off does not automatically mean that they are ready to sell. Could they even buy the home that they're already in in today's prices? So the analytics, although it, it's kind of compelling at first blush, it really doesn't make that much sense. You might as well be doing cold everything at that point. Well, so again, understand that Julie is now obviously focusing in on geo farming. And that's where you guys are paying just to direct mail to the uh, people in a particular geographic area that some sort of fancy AI algorithm has decided are going to be the most likely to sell. Well, in that same bucket of really ineffective is going to be overall farming. Uh, and farming is the same idea. You're just mailing out postcards to the same people every single month or whatever, hoping that they're going to change their mind. That's, again, something that's been tried and tested over the ages. Now, I will give you an example where it does work just so we're covering our bases. If you're in a market where there is high turnover from say there's a lot of relocation and there's a lot of that sort of thing and people in DC, Virginia, uh, just different areas around the country where there is going to be a lot of turnover and now we're getting into the, you know, the, the, uh, the hypothetical here and there's not other agents that are not also doing um, a lot of direct mail, for example, then you might actually have a chance of getting some leads from a traditional geographic farm. But that's not going to be the case with anybody. So if you happen to live in an area where there's high turnover, you're also going to see an enormous an, a number of agents that are doing direct mail. And so the whole thing with direct mail is you have to have mailed somebody something on the exact day they were thinking about moving or doing any kind of real estate transaction. Otherwise, it just becomes trash. And that's really how the geo marketers, they'll act, or even just the guys that are trying to sell you the idea of doing farming, they actually will tell you that to their credit. They'll say your whole mission is to mail out a bunch of things to a bunch of people that aren't interested in doing business with you that hopefully one day you're going to, you know. The luck of the draw. Basically. Exactly. And, they and, actually joke about it. They call it the spray and pray. I don't know if you've heard that before. Yeah, spray the neighborhood with all of your stuff and pray that somebody's ready to move today. Not exactly a great plan. But again, going back to our filters, I want you to think about that. You can mail out. Again, this is again going back to and the farming idea has been around forever, like since the 1950s, by the mm -hmm. way. But in, in a lot of brokerages, you should actually they would uh, have so many agents and they'd split a, uh, you know, a, a, an area city up and they'd say, you know, Bob, this is your um, this is your particular geographic boundary and you're supposed to go in there and mail them things. And yeah, that's how that's where all this comes from. Just sort of antiquated thinking, frankly. Um, but really, at the end of the day, the whole geographic farming thing, when it doesn't work and you call the geographic farming or even the geo farming place and complain that it isn't working, what they're going to do is tell you that you have not been doing it for long enough and you just need to spend more money. And over the last 20 years that Julie and I have been real estate coaches, that's one of the things that I find to be the most, I, honestly, it makes me, the, it pisses me off. One of the things that really makes me the most 
really disenfranchised sure. with a lot of the people selling stuff to real estate agents. It's just the really the bold faced lie. Well, that's their objection handler. You have to spend more, more frequently, a larger number of pieces going out for more time. Exactly. And here you are, an agent who's struggling to make ends meet who's being told to do the wrong thing and being told that the wrong thing might one day actually generate a transaction. All the while, they're spending all their money and they're spending all their time hoping and praying that this thing that really never works will one day work for them magically. And again, geographic farming in the right situation, in the right market, you know, all these stars aligning actually can be effective, but the probability of it being effective based on our own coaching experience is so low that it actually went one number 28 of the least effective Indeed. things you can be doing moving on to 27 all right this one's for you number 27 facebook and or pay-per-click using facebook can you speak to that a little bit it's the same idea you're essentially trying to market to people that are in your facebook group and you're hoping and praying that it's just like geographic farming online. That's the best way of describing what a lot of Facebook advertising is. And Facebook advertising was a huge trend probably about five or six years ago. Those of you who have been in the business long enough, you'll remember that. Oh, Facebook advertising, it's so cheap. You can actually, you know, get an impression. Here, little little advanced tip here. If anybody's trying to sell you off the idea that impressions are worth anything, you're very impressionable and you're going to be ripped <laughs> yeah. off. So the only thing that really matters at the end of the day is actually a pre-qualified lead and a, a close transaction which is not the same as an impression exactly and that's again you can see how facebook with their facebook uh advertising concept they essentially borrowed a page from the geographic farming people geographic farming people you mail out a bunch of these postcards and over time you're going to happen to win the lottery the you know neighbor on that particular day received your postcard and they just happen to want to sell and by the way they didn't have another real estate agent they don't know any other real estate agents they mm -hmm. you guys get the the very small likelihood of you getting anything from that well, generalized Facebook advertising is the same thing. Again, pay attention to these least effective things. What you're doing is you're casting a really, really big net, hoping and praying that you're going to catch a fish. And oh, by the way, if there's a thousand other agents that are casting nets in the exact same area, I want you to think about the tiny probability of you actually generating a closed transaction off doing some of these, you know, essentially big branding and marketing ideas. Point number 26 of the least effective things happens to be branding using social media platforms. Now, let's apply our filters. This is entertaining, sometimes creative, poses as work, but is generally ineffective. Now, these should be used, and we're talking about things like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. These platforms can be used in support of your core business, but absolutely not instead of, and should not be looked at as standalone lead generation machines. Now, here's, here's a really, I'm going to do this last thing, sure. and I want you to talk about this. Here's a major filter to look at this branding using social media platforms. Did somebody go there to say Facebook, Instagram, TikTok to learn about real estate, or did they go there to watch cute kitten videos today? What was their actual intent when they went to that page? And that, again, you, hopefully you are learning the things that work uh, the, the least effective, the things that take the most time and oftentimes the most amount of money are, you know, these types of ideas. Because conceptually, you're now saying, hey, I'm in real estate. Here's a great tour of this new listing I have. And you're plastering it on your Facebook page, or your TikTok page or your whatever. And you're hoping one of the people that follows you is actually going to find wherever the heck it is that you're talking about interesting. They aren't going to... Facebook, let's say, for example, one of your friends isn't going to Facebook thinking about transacting. You're playing the lottery. You're hoping and praying that you're going to put up a post on a particular day that one of your 5,000 followers is going to want to, you know, then somehow magically because the Facebook algorithm is going to decide to show to that person. You guys get all the 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 probabilities are working against you. The, the, essentially, the, the reality of it is, is that the probability of anybody seeing your message on an exact day that they're th thinking about doing a transaction is so small and, and it's not even worth doing. And that's unfortunately the truth. Now, and that's the first, that's like the first phase. Okay. So let's say that you are super lucky and they're like really digging whatever you just posted. The next assumption is that they are both motivated and qualified and only going to work with you. I mean, there's layers and layers and layers of it not being effective. Now, Julie did say something, and this is where social comes in. We do believe in social media. We are advocates of it. We use it. Many of you found us on Instagram. Or use you it found, every day. We do. We use it every day. I just put up a picture of um, 
Here's clickbait. I'll just, here, I'm about to throw out some <laughs> clickbait. I just put a picture up of Julie Harris and no. Ricky Martin on her Instagram oh. page. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Where Ricky yeah. Martin is uh, coaching me on how to take a picture. Yes. That's what he was doing. Okay, so loosely related to coaching. But is are, is one of you going to sign up for coaching because you saw me with Ricky Martin? I don't know. Maybe. But but that's not, not our, our leading thought. <laughs> well, so the social media nowadays is used to... So there's passive lead generation and there's proactive lead generation, right? So your passive lead generation are all the things we've talked about so far. Passive is where you're putting something out there, hoping to get something back. You're hoping and praying that someone's going to respond to your TikTok video or whatever, right? Speculating. Now, where the social comes in, where it's very powerful, and really in this day and age, the platforms that you should be focusing on, and we're going to talk about this, well, we can mention it now. If you have to choose one or two platforms to really focus on, it's going to be YouTube primarily, followed by really everything else. I would go, depending on your demographic, your the age of your average consumer, it would probably be, it has to be YouTube first. And I will explain more um, in a, a, a subsequent point as to why. Well, here it is. Uh, YouTube is the second largest search engine following, uh, followed, you know, obviously following Google. So if you're looking for a powerful way to get searched and discovered, YouTube is definitely going to be there. But does that replace having direct conversations with people who are already decided that they want to do a real estate transaction? Absolutely not. So there's passive lead generation and there's proactive lead generation. Your passive lead generation techniques, this social media, is there to reinforce the proactive lead generation. You can do proactive lead generation at a very high level and get great results without doing any of the passive, but it's almost impossible to get any sort of real meaningful results from doing passive lead generation without doing the proactive. You guys get it? So you can do, once you learn how to be a proactive lead generator, if you never really want to get good at social or any of the online stuff, you're going to be right as rain in real estate. Maybe not true in other businesses, but certainly in real estate. Uh, but if you do it the other way, most likely you're not going to survive long in real estate. Now, I want to also warn you against something else. And I know this is very normal in real estate circles to believe that you have to be famous on social to be successful in real estate. I want you to logically tell me why that's uh, not true. I want you to actually in your own brain think why that's not true. I want you to ask yourself, when was the last time you hired a service professional for yourself because they had a big Instagram page? Now, here's how a lot of real estate people will uh, defend what they do online. They will say, well, I got a bunch of leads. I watched something the other day, an agent. She was very well spoken, did a great job talking about her social media. And I thought, well, let's, let's see what the spin is. And then she started talking about the number of leads she specifically gets off. I believe it was Instagram. Well, she's talking about leads and there are mostly buyer leads. So she's getting buyer leads. And I believe the number was like less than 30 for a whole year. And then I thought to myself, and she didn't, I wasn't doing the interviewing, so I couldn't have asked her the question. I thought to myself, how much time did she spend making those Instagram videos? How much effort did she spend putting in those Instagram videos? What was the average cost per hour? What's her average cost per hour? What's her time worth? And what did she actually get as a result, her return on the investment for all that social media stuff? But again, I want you to understand, we are advocates of social media. In Premier Coaching, we do teach you guys how to, to do a really great job on YouTube and on some of the other uh, social media platforms. But be clear, when you're building your spokes on your wheel, you want to put the anti-fragile spokes on first in social media and all the passive things that Julie's uh, written for us to uh, share with you guys today. Those are the ones that are the most fragile. And here's another uh, great saying. I don't remember, you and I didn't, Julie and I didn't think of this up, but it's a great thing to keep in mind. Never build your mansion on land you don't own. And the concept there is, if you're going to build a, a business that's going to last the ages, you're going to have to build your lead generation, which is the number one thing. Marketing and advertising is more important than product. Marketing and advertising, ultimately, your ability to generate a lead, is even, it's more important than even service. You can market it. If you have a great product or great service, but you do a really poor job of selling it, you're going to go out of business. But if you have a, you guys get the point, but if you have a average product, even a commodity service, like, you know, selling real estate, that's a commodity. There's a lot of people that do the same thing that you do, but you're really good at proactive lead generation supported by passive lead generation. You're going to own the market. That's a real key differentiator in your thinking that you have to really dial into. But please don't believe your mission in real estate is to be famous because ultimately you're going to have to make a choice. The choice is going to be, and I, I'm reflecting back on, a, on a, um, an email I received 
from one of our competitors. And he, we're on all their mailing lists. And the subject line of the email was uh, essentially, uh, what was it, Julia? I read it to you. I was like, uh, how, how to be famous, famous on whatever the platform. On YouTube. I think it was YouTube. It's how to be yeah. famous on YouTube. Yeah. And so what this person was doing is, you know, hypothetically telling you how to make YouTube videos and whatnot, which of course we include in Premier Coaching. But he was focusing in on your ego. He was focusing in on your innate desire for recognition. Yes. He was, so the choice you have to make, this is more of a mindset thought than it is an actual choice, but just, you know, actually consider this. If you have to choose between being famous in being rich. You can't choose both. If you don't like the word rich, replace it with wealthy. Our definition of rich is where your money works for you and you no longer have to work for your money. So if you have to choose between famous and being rich, which would you choose? And here's the unfortunate truth. There's a whole generation of you that have gotten into the business, really mostly in the last 15 years, that have, without knowing it, chosen based on your actions to be famous and now you're uh, discovering the hard way that you are moving yourself further and further away from actually ever obtaining any resemblance of financial independence. In other words, you built your mansion on land you don't own, and you've also focused on the wrong goal, thinking that the more famous you are, the more followers you have, the more likes you have, you actually believe that's going to result in more transactions. And many of you are discovering the hard way that that wasn't true. So we're going to go one more today, and then we'll pick up where we left off today tomorrow. And this is number 25, least effective to most effective forms of lead generation. Julie. Getting slightly more effective is number 25, cold door knocking. Now, we're not talking about door knocking before open houses or door knocking for sale by owners or expires. We're talking about flat out cold door knocking. Now, this is cheap or free. Maybe you have a little expense in bringing some flyers with you, but only randomly effective. It is, however, a good place to build confidence and skills with you know little or no expenditure. Get used to talking about real estate. There is a place for it, but it is only randomly effective. Now, cold doors are the least effective, knocking door by door with no reason to believe that the inhabitants are either A, even the owner of the house, B, wanting to sell, or C, don't already have an agent in mind, and I would add maybe even they are an agent. Okay, so that's very random and very cold. Now, if you're going to cold door knock, at least do it in your own neighborhood. Knock prior to open houses, knock with a market report, have something of value. But realize it takes an epic amount of contacts to get results. And it's, you know, it's not that effective. How many doors can you, how many conversations can you actually have on an average day? It takes a long time to get results. All of the things that are the least effective have uh, real strong uh, common elements, don't they? You're going to ask strangers for the most part <laughs> right. if they're wanting to buy or sell real estate. In other words, you're hoping and praying. You're playing the real estate leads lottery, hoping you're going to have the winning uh, number. You're going to knock on the winning door and that person yeah. just happens to be ready to hire a realtor. Don't have any, doesn't have anybody else in mind. You guys get it? So there's another common element to all the least effective things. They require the least amount of skill. Exactly. And they have the least amount of, you know, chance of being overtly rejected. So there's a lot of innate things that are common uh, with the least effective forms of lead generation. The reason that they're mostly least, the least effective also is that every other agent's going to gravitate towards them because they require the least amount of skill, because they require the least amount of rejection. Yeah, they're conflict-free. Exactly. Pretty, if you have a conversation, it's going to be a pretty easy conversation. But remember our number one filter. Is it actually effective? Is this going to net you an actual transaction? That's right. And this is where agents get stuck in what we call contactitis. Well, I mean, I can make so many more contacts when I just go door knocking. Well, that's fine. And you're getting used to talking about real estate. That's, that's kind of skill building. But ultimately, aren't you actually looking for a real closable transaction? Of course you are. The only reason that this is higher than the ones we previously presented is because at least door knocking, you don't have a lot of expense other than your time. Well, cold door knocking is also a good way. You said it perfectly. It's practice, it's, it's practice but it's a great way for pe uh, agents to get directly in front of people. Yes. And, and really, you're going to discover as we get into the rest of our list, as we move towards the most effective forms of lead generation, the more you directly contact and communicate person to person, you know, voice to voice with humans, right? Yes. The more effective in the, le the less expensive that lead source is, but here's the other magic in it, the less competition you're going to have. For sure. The things that are the least effective are the most, uh, the least in it, the, <laughs> I'm tripping over my own words, right? The things that are the least effective and most expensive 
also have the most competition because they require the least amount of skill. And as Julie and said- And they're the most passive. And yeah. they're most passive, right. So we're going to move on to point number 26 tomorrow. In the meantime, your homework from today is share this podcast with other folks. If you're listening to us over on YouTube, please do subscribe to the podcast. And remember, join Premier Coaching. It costs you nothing. Text the word Premier to 47372 or just go to Premier. Is it, what is it, Julie? PremierCoaching.com. Thank you. I'm seeing if you're paying attention. Yeah. PremierCoaching.com. Remember when texting message and data rates may apply. We're picking up with point number 24 tomorrow. Uh, please do tune in. I Hopefully you guys are going to love the next uh, five or six points we share with you tomorrow as much as we loved thinking these through. Hey, I have a question for you. If you have any suggestions for podcast ideas, if you have any, you know, if you want to debate the order in which we put some of these points, let's t- discuss it. Put it in the comments over on our YouTube page or Instagram, wherever. Let's get the conversation started. Let us know that we're communicating effectively um, our ideas so that you guys, frankly, can make this year and all the years that follow the most effective, most powerful, and most profitable years of your real estate career. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. Hello. Thank you for having watched this video. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right. And don't forget to hit that like button, leave your comments and questions below, and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're going to love that one.